to Moo Moo Math and Science, where we upload a new math video or science every day. In this video, I'd like to close, uh, show a couple shortcuts whenever you are adding or subtracting rational numbers. First, a rational number is a real number that can be written as a fraction. Many of the numbers you will encounter are rational numbers. So I kind of, in this video, work four examples that you may encounter that could cause you a couple problems and a couple shortcuts or different ways you can solve them. This first is you will encounter a lot of fractions. And um, the fractions in these particular ones do not have the same denominators. So uh, what I would like to show you, you may have seen a method called the butterfly method where you circle the two numbers and it looks kind of like a butterfly here. We'll decorate just a little bit. And so the way this works is that you multiply uh, the two numbers in the circle. So you go uh, 4 times 3 is 12, and then 6 times 1 is 6, and then you add these two numbers, and that becomes 18, and then 6 times 4, you multiply the bottom numbers, so that is 24. Now, the second shortcut that you may not be aware of is that you need to simplify this fraction and one of the ways you can simplify the fraction is just write the two numbers next to each other and draw a uh, line underneath and then you find a number that will multiply into both of them. In this particular example I'm going to go easy and I know that uh, 2 will go into both of them because they end in even numbers. So 2 goes into 18 9 times and 2 goes into 24 12 times. I then draw a line underneath because you don't have prime numbers yet, and I know that 3 goes into both of these. 3 goes into 9 3 times and goes into 12 4 times. I'm now down to prime, and so I just rewrite this as 3 fourths. So there's your answer. So if you don't like finding a common denominator, um, etc., you can use a combination of butterfly method and then the latter method of simplifying, okay? Another, it, the same thing works whenever you have subtraction. Again, I'm going to do butterfly method, okay? And so this time, 4 times 3 is 12. 6 times 1 is 6, except this time I will subtract. So that becomes 6 over, and remember you multiply the bottom. 6 times 4 is 24. And then I'm going to simplify using the same method as before, and I know that 3 goes into both of these, so that's 3 eighths. We have a prime number. We're down to prime, so the answer is 3 eighths. Okay, so that works with subtraction also. Okay, next, you sometimes have mixed numbers, and there's two ways you can solve this. The first way, many of you have been taught what you do is you add the fractions separately. Okay, I personally think that's the easier way. So first what I'm going to do is I'm going to circle the fractions so you can kind of identify them, is you multiply the fractions, excuse me, add the fractions together. So I'm going to go 3, 6 plus 1 fourth. I'm going to use the butterfly method again on this. Okay, it looks familiar. We have 12, 6. Um, that is 12 plus 6 is 18 over 24, and I know, because I did this earlier, it reduces to 3 fourths, okay? And then what you do with this 3 fourths, oops, sorry, I went off a little bit, is you add, you have the fraction, and then you add this to the two whole numbers. 2 plus 1 is 3 and 3 fourths, okay? That's one way you can solve these. Another way, if you would like, is you can convert them to improper fractions. So I'm going to do the circle trick. 6 times 2 is 12, plus 3 is 15 over 6, plus, circle trick again, 4 plus 1 is 4, plus 1 is 5 fourths, okay? I then can then do the butterfly method. It'll work for this also, okay? And so we have 4 times 15 is 60, 6 times 5 is uh, 30. We will add 60 plus 30 is 90 
over, multiply the two bottom fractions, 6, 12, 18, that's 24. I then reduce this because I have 90 divided by 24. 24 goes into 90, let's see here, um, we'll go 3 times, 3 times 24 is, I'm going to cheat here and use my calculator, is 72. 90 minus 72, 72 is 18, so then I have 18 over 24, and then I can simplify that. So I have 3, and I'm going to use this method again. I like to use this method. Both of these can be divided by 3. 3 goes into 18, uh, 6 times into 24, 8 times. Then I can use 2, 2 goes into 6 three times and into eight four times. So again, you get the same answer, three and three fourths. So again, what you can do whenever you have two mixed numbers, you can either add the whole numbers separately and the fractions separately, or you can create improper fractions and then simplify. Same answer. Okay, finally, you sometimes get decimals. And decimals, when you Add decimals are easy, but it's also easy to make a mistake. So the most important thing is always line up the decimals. And so I have 5.04, 2.1. And if you don't like the way that looks, you can add zeros to make it look pretty. Bring down the 4, 1, and that's 7.14. The most important thing is keep your decimals. And then... What if you have 3 minus 0 0.07? Again, you want to line up the decimals. So in this particular case, I'm going to add some zeros. Okay. Now remember, you have whenever you have a number by itself, it's always at the far right unless you have the decimal someplace else. I then just simply put the 0 0.07 underneath, and now it looks like a number that is easy to subtract. I need to borrow one. From this zero, I can't, so I'm going to borrow the one from here, so this becomes a two, okay? This becomes a nine, because you need to borrow from that. This becomes a ten. Ten minus seven is three. Bring down the nine, and then bring down the two, okay? Now, please notice, remember, you cannot borrow from a zero, so I had to borrow all the way from the three, and then, so this zero borrowed ten from the three, and then this zero borrowed from that. So that's why it is 2.93. Hope that helps with adding and subtracting rational numbers and a couple shortcuts to make your life a little easier. Moo Moo Math and Science uploads a new math video every day. Please subscribe and share.